Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for having me here to present this work, uh, learning-based practical smartphone eavesdropping with building accelerometer. So as we all know, uh, currently the smartphones are equipped with a, a set of uh, comprehensive sensors. And some sensors are considered low risk, and uh, any apps can access its data without any permission. For example, the motion sensors or the magnetic sensors. And some sensors are considered high risk, and uh, the apps need a permission to access their data. For example, the microphone, since they can capture the human speech voice. And uh, our work here is trying to show you that uh, even the zero permission accelerometer is also able to capture the human speech voice. So uh, in literature, uh, the Mikowski team found that uh, the smartphone's gyroscope sensor is able to capture the voice emitted from an independent loudspeaker placed on the same table. And the reason for that is because uh, uh, the voice is also a type of vibration and it can transmit through the medium as an acoustic wave, and the motion sensors are sensitive to this kind of waves. But uh, during the transmission of the voice, it's uh, severely attenuated and distorted. So actually, the final result of this uh, attack is uh, really inaccurate. And uh, later on, the uh, uh, the ANAS team systematically studied the uh, uh, response of motion sensors towards uh, human speech voices in different scenarios. So they studied the, their response towards uh, loudspeaker rendered, laptop rendered, and human rendered speech voices and traveling through either a solid surface or through the air. And uh, what they found is uh, only the loudspeaker rendered voice traveling through a solid surface can achieve some noticeable impact on the motion sensor. So currently, this thread still needs to obey the limitation that uh, the, the, the smartphone and the speaker need to be within the same solid surface. So uh, currently, this kind of attack is still considered uh, a low-risk attack due to these uh, two commonly acknowledged limitations. The first limitation is that uh, people all believe that uh, currently all the motion sensors inside the smartphone has a really low sampling rate selling at 200 hertz. And with this low sampling rate, uh, and with this low sampling rate, uh, they are only able to pick up the uh, uh, frequency component, a uh, really narrow part of the frequency component of the human speech voice. And uh, the second limitation is that, uh, according to the previous work, the only feasible way to attack this kind of uh, uh, voice is to uh, place the smartphone and the speaker uh, both on the same solid surface. And uh, so for the first limitation, we found that actually the uh, sampling rates of the, uh, of the motion sensor are determined by the performance of the smartphone. And uh, this information of those uh, recently released uh, smartphones confirmed our idea. And as we can see, the latest uh, uh, sampling, the sampling rate of some latest smartphone can already be 500 hertz, so which allows them to pick up almost the entire frequency band of the human speech voice. So the, the 200 hertz sampling rate setting no longer exists. And uh, for the second limitation, so we found out that uh, people failed to assume a uh, much more adverse attacking scenario, where the motion sensors and the speakers are inside the same smartphone. So in that case, the, 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 smartphone, uh, the, the sensors and the speakers are in close physical contact, and the voice always, uh, will always arrive in the same direction. So this is a figure of the response of the motion sensors at a different uh, volume level. So as we can see, the, the sensors still have a really noticeable response even at the 20% volume level. And also, as we can see on the right side of the figure, uh, the z-axis signal is always, the most, always has the most noticeable response. And so in addition, the, a smartphone speaker is much more likely to reveal some uh, uh, private information than an independent uh, loudspeaker. For example, the attacker can overhear the user's uh, phone talking 
or over here the user's voice memo, or they can uh, over here and uh, infer the user's like music or video preferences. So based on our observation, we propose this new type of side channel attack. So in, in this uh, threat model, there is a uh, victim user who plays some uh, voice signal using the speaker inside the smartphone. And meanwhile, the attacker will execute a uh, spy app that's running in the background and continuously collect the accelerometer data. And then the attacker will try to extract the, inform the private information from those uh, collected accelerometer data. And also, the, this smartphone can be either placed on a table or can be held in the victim's hand. So uh, to extract those private informations, we propose this uh, deep learning-based system. So this system is, uh, uh, contains three components, uh, three modules. The first module, the preprocessing, is used to uh, ex uh, eliminate the noise and the distortions and convert the signals into uh, spectrogram, so they can be, fur they can be further, further processed by some deep learning techniques. And uh, the second module, the speech recognition module, one will convert the spectro spectrogram into the text. And uh, the third module, which is called the speech reconstruction, will convert the spectrograms into uh, uh, into s s uh, audio signals so that uh, the attacker can hear this uh, reconstructed uh, voice again and uh, double check if the recovered uh, text is correct or not. So uh, uh, the preprocessing module is mainly designed to tackle these three problems. So the first problem is the, the raw accelerometer data. It's not a sample that uh, fixes sampling rate. And the second uh, problem is the raw acceleration data, uh, accelerometer data could be severely distorted by the victim's hand movement. And the third is that actually the raw accelerometer contains uh, too much digits and they need to be segmented so that they can be further processed. So uh, to tackle the first problem, we use the uh, linear interpolation method to upsample uh, the raw uh, accelerometer data to 1,000 hertz. And uh, here is the result of the upsampling. And uh, then uh, we, will, we have to eliminate it, the distortion caused by the human hand movement. And uh, according to our analysis, we find out that uh, uh, the human hand movement can hardly affect uh, the, the frequency band higher than 80 hertz. So then we just use a high pass filter to eliminate all the interference uh, below the 80 hertz. And as shown in this figure, uh, as we can see uh, in the figure down there, uh, we using this high pass filter, we almost eliminated all the distortions caused by the hand movements. And uh, after this one, we, we use the segmentation alg algorithm to, to cut this signal into several small parts, and each small segment corresponds to one single word. And then we use a, uh, uh, we use a uh, uh, short-time Fourier transform to convert uh, this segmented uh, signal data into spectrograms, and we store the uh, and we store the spectrograms using a RGB image, so that they can be uh, processed by some uh, deep learning techniques. And uh, so, in this uh, figure here, uh, this blue image. That is the spectrogram of the signal collected by the z-axis of the accelerometer. And as we can see, this z-axis always has the really noticeable response towards the speech voice. And uh, then we are ready to uh, recognize uh, the, the, the text from this spectrogram. So to recognize the speech, we use this uh, uh, dense net as our basic uh, deep learning networks. The reason why we choose these dense nets and uh, not choosing some uh, other traditional deep learning networks like, like VGG or ResNet is because this dense net introduces the connection between each layers so that it does not need any more additional nodes to maintain the information from previous layers. And uh, here is the result of our speech recognition. So as we can see here, uh, 
uh, as shown in the results, our speech recognition model outperforms uh, the state-of-the-art model a lot uh, in uh, recognizing digits, letters, or speakers. So uh, let's uh, show in the first table uh, when, it's, uh, when they are used in recognizing only digits. Uh, our top one accuracy outperforms the state-of-the-art model by 52%. And uh, when it's recognizing digits plus letters, our model can still achieve a 55 top one accuracy and a 78% top three accuracy. And uh, when it's used in recognizing like different speakers, uh, as shown here, uh, our top one accuracy can achieve 70% uh, accuracy when recognizing 20 different speakers. Well, the state-of-the-art model can only achieve 50% accuracy uh, when recognizing only 10 speakers. And uh, also, our model can be used uh, to recognize, uh, to search for hot words uh, among a, a lot of like uh, insensitive words. So, so to use this, we just uh, train a, uh, a model that can recognize these eight uh, predefined hot words. And as shown in the table, this model is able to uh, 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 like, uh, uh, recognize and find this uh, hot word, find each hot word like, uh, at a, uh, a more than 80% averagely accuracy. And so we also test this hot word search module in this next test. So in this end-to-end -end attack test, we will conduct a phone call to volunteers and ask the volunteers to tell us a, a eight-digit password. So the volunteers will first say a sentence like the password is, and then they will say a eight-digit password. And uh, then, as we can see in the, the, the figure above, that is the uh, number of conversations that uh, the, the hot word is uh, correctly located. And uh, so in this, uh, in this uh, table below here, so in both three settings, the table setting, that means uh, when the smartphone is placed on the table, and the handhold setting, that means uh, when the victim holds the smartphone and sits somewhere, and in the handhold walking, that means uh, when the victim holds the smartphone and walking around, uh, our hot word search model can achieve like at least 85% accuracy when locating those uh, uh, hot words, when locating that phrase uh, password is. And also, uh, then uh, we use the recognition model to recognize the eight-digit password following these uh, hot words. And as we can see, we can still achieve uh, more than 80% accuracy uh, in the top three uh, digits recognition. And uh, that's all for the, for the uh, speech recognition module. And uh, here is the implementation of the speech reconstruction module. So to reconstruct the, the audio signal, we use this uh, three component uh, deep learning network. Uh, the first component is called the encoder, which will encode uh, the, the spectrogram of the signals into some features. And the second module, which is called, which is called the residual blocks, will uh, refine the encoded features by residual mappings, which this idea is inspired by the ResNet network. And then at last, uh, there will be a decoder that uh, decodes the features into audio spectrograms. And later on, we will use a griffin limb algorithm to convert those uh, uh, audio spectrograms into real audio signals so that uh, the attacker can just uh, hear the voice. And uh, uh, now let's listen to some uh, uh, example of the recovered voice. <laughs> Yeah, so it uh, sounds more like it, right? And uh, so, uh, and on the right side, that is like a detailed results of the, of this process. So the first row that is the original uh, audio signal collected by the microphone, and the second row that is the the filtered uh, audio signal. I mean, uh, so we filter out the noise, and then the third row that is the the raw acceleration data accelerometer data 
So as we can see, the, the structure is similar, but uh, the, the, the details are, are not quite too similar. And the fourth row, that is the final result of our proposed uh, 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 speech re reconstruction. So as we can see, they, they almost reconstruct uh, the, the detail and the structure really similar to the filtered audio signals. And uh, so, but uh, here's, uh, like, uh, here's all for, the, for our proposed system. So we also uh, come up with some ideas of how to defend this kind of attack. So we propose these two potential methods to defend these attacks. The first one is uh, we suggest that we should limit the sampling rate of accelerometer. And uh, uh, through in the table, according to our test, we found out that uh, when the sampling rate of accelerometer is limited to 50 hertz, the recognition accuracy will drastically drop to 30%. So we suggest that uh, later on, all the apps that are requesting to access the accelerometer with a sampling rate higher than 50 hertz should ask for the user's permission first. And uh, also, the second uh, potential method to defend this attack is uh, to notify the user when some app is accessing the accelerometer data. So for example, like the, like the iOS system, just uh, display a flashing icon in the status bar and uh, here is the, like, the conclusion of our work. Uh, we first uh, find out that uh, the sound signals emitted by the smartphone speakers can significantly be captured by the accelerometer in the same smartphone. And also we found out that uh, the accelerometer's uh, sampling rate is, uh, is able to cover almost the, the entire frequency band of human speech voice. And uh, in the end, we use uh, some deep learning techniques to recognize the speech content and reconstruct the audio signals from the accelerometer data. And uh, that's all of this work. And uh, thank you for listening. And if you'd like to know more details about this work, please contact the author through this email. Uh, thank you. <laughs>